Hey guys, welcome to episode 11 of Punkin. Do I seem serious? Yeah, I am serious. Notice I have my surgical procedure shirt on. That means surgery. That means I got my surgical mask that I had made for my channel. It's right there. Some of y'all don't believe me. You know what? I am a surgeon. When I leave my day job, yeah, they all go bouncing out of there with a name tag that says, Hello, my name is Perfect. Do these glasses make me look more intelligent? Well, they're to see your mouth go agape when I show you what we're going to do. Let's explain the um, mechanical properties. Now, I have told you. I don't know how many times we run across these harmonies and K's and yard sale guitars and everybody's like, oh, they need a re neck reset. Well, they might. If you're looking at this part right here and you can see a big gap, yeah, that probably needs a, a neck reset, but I've told you. This part, where is it? I gotta have my stuff in order. Surgery is a multifaceted Thing. you got to have all your scrap apparatus right. But I've told you that this part of the body where the neck comes together, if you're seeing cracks here, you're seeing the, if the back of a guitar is loose, it's almost a sure giveaway because all this depends on each other. Now, there's a guy named Ted up in Canada, eh? And uh, I don't watch too many people, but I watch this guy. I'm going to give you a link below and mention him. I'll give you. But he was being interviewed by somebody the other day. Yeah, I know this is long. You can't get, you can't get to payday without doing some work. Let your ears do the working. Anyway, he was talking about the experience that he got working on harmonies and stuff like that. And he made the comment that he thought it was very possible that no one ever changed the glue, the hide glue, vats in the factory because the, the glue, good hide glue, especially if you order it from a reputable place, you can get it where it dries almost like glass, but the thicker it is and the murkier, murkier, murkier that's right, but he referenced He's seen guitars where it was just slopped all over on the inside and it looked like blood running all over the place. Does that sound familiar? See them big streaks right there? I didn't do that. To come out of the factory that way. But he made a very interesting comment among several that I could totally relate to. He said that when you take the back off of one of these old harmonies, it's like the thing just springs. And when you cut you put a you put a, uh, a palette knife in here it pops and I immediately knew the sounds he was talking about thanks Ted I'm gonna give you a link yeah if you want to get somebody that doesn't have all this going on that works on uh, better great instruments you want to track down Ted Woodford I'm gonna give you a link anyway so I've told you a hundred times that this part, watch this, the only thing, you notice I've got this strung up, look how high the strings are. Well, the bridge is really high, you see that? I can knock that down, but this part is really high. So if I were to take this off right now and try to line up the back to where I knew that the string and neck angle was gonna be just right, this thing would bust up all over the place. So I want you to watch right here. I'm going to grab the neck, I'm going to hold the body, pick a reference point. You see things are twisting, they are twisting right here at the waist. Even though this has got this on here, watch this part right up here. You see it's all flexing. So, in order to make this work, to get the back glued on, I have to take this off and I have to be able to keep tension on it while I'm doing it, this is how I set the neck. No amount of making sure that this is okay. Yeah, you're saying, well, you bolted the neck. Of course I did. That's in an episode. If you haven't, if this is your first episode on 
pumpkin, you need to get up on the playlist up there. But that bolt, which is removable, by the way, because it's got a T-knot right down in there. Um, all it's doing is holding the relationship of the neck to the body stable. Everything has to come together here now. So here's kind of what this is going to look like. We're going to take... You ever see one of these? Yeah, I built it for an episode called 10 String Crack Hack or Repairing Something or Other. I'm going to give you a, a link to that up there. So you can take a 10 string and you can feed it up through a crack in an arch top. After, where is it? It's over there. After you put a cleat on it, on the string through a little hole and uh, that little gadget right there will keep the cleat in place you put glue on it and then you pull it up through the crack and then you take this winch thing here and you set it on the top notice it's got cork paper on the bottom so it doesn't scuff up these fine instruments like punk in here and you pull it up and the glue dries, you release the winch and then you take a magnet and fish the string out. So we're gonna do a modification of this. We're gonna use triangulation, a screw eye or two, and some holes that are already in the guitar. And we're gonna winch this thing into place because face it, whatever we're going to do has to have this part be wide open. This has got to go. This has got to be like this. So, take a few minutes and make sure you're right. Watch me don the official surgical mask of my channel. And let's get to work on this. We're going to build a tool or two. And I'm going to show you something I don't think anybody's ever seen before unless they were completely and utterly inebriated. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's get set up here. First off, get a metric ruler. Metric hater, I haven't bashed on you in a while. How you been? Not that I care. You've been probably making yourself suffer over elementary calculations. Look, how big is this? Well, it's nine and one, two, three, something or other, whatever. And if I need to find half of that, well, then that's whatever. Or I can take the metric system and say, wow, that is 240. Half of that is 120. And I can just go like that. And there it is. Imagine that. So once you get a piece of wood about that long let's go to the cubit system if we're gonna like between your elbow and your wrist that kind of thing anyway I need you to take about <laughs> I'm trying to work with you here about 60 millimeters or if you really insist about two and a half inches of either end on something that's just a tad over nine inches long then I want you, so that's two and a half here, two and a half here. Now I want you to take any straight edge after you've drawn this line. Look at this little trick. That corner, this corner, that corner, this corner, this gives you the middle. This is in case you don't have any kind of a measuring device. You go off the baseline, you come up here, and I need you to be about, I'm using the dumb end again, about 40 millimeters above that center point we're going to draw a circle right there we're going to do that there you with me okay i'll be right back okay now i want you to take a drill step bits are cool and i want you to drill a hole it's big enough for some old tuner that you have laying around to fit in there like that see that is not enough i need to go through just a little bit more Okay, so there we go. 
just like that. Okay, now we're going to go to the jigsaw and we're going to cut these off. And then we're going to go to the bandsaw and we're going to round the edges over. See you in a minute. Okay, here we are. Look at this. Okay, now I want you to find the middle of this. However, you might do that. Wow. That is 122. Is that a number that I've told you about before? So 122 is 61. Wow. Check that out right in the middle. And we'll take this. And I am going to draw a line in the middle. Look at that skill set. Yeah. Now, the space in here needs to be an exacting space. It has something to do with a relationship to a trapeze tailpiece. Ooh, ah, isn't that fancy? So I'm going to put the hole for the trapeze tailpiece about right there. See that? In fact, I think I want to put it up there close to the front because this hole is not going to matter. It's these that are going to matter. You see that? Now, I'm going to make sure that those are square with the world and they're not. You can see that. So I'm going to go there and there. And then I'm going to want to know that we're square with the world right there and right there. Now, I want you to take a look at this hole in this tuner. Do you see that? I want that hole to be about there. So I'm going to make a mark there. And then again with the metric system, which is awesome, I'm going to come in and go, wow, that is exactly 15. So I'm going to go over here and go, wow, that's 15 right there. And I'm going to take my square and I'm going to put a mark here and here. Okay, you with me? Maybe I should turn this around. This is an exacting science, people. Yeah. Sometime today would be... I'm so fast at everything, I can just have a little time to waste now. What I want to do is I want to have a relationship with half of this. You see that? Half of that right there. So, I want to come in about halfway, which is 50. That's 25. Can you see all this? Of course you can. And that is 25. You see that? So now I'm going to take this and scoot it out to the end. This is a nice little square here. There we go. Okay. There we go. There, there, and I might as well do it there just for the sake of it. Now what I want to do is half a 25 is about what? 50, half, excuse me, half of 50 is 25, and half of that is what? Do, 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 let's call it 12. So we'll do 12 there. We will do 12 there. We will do... This is a theocratic exercise. You're going to have to figure out what we're doing. Some of you are jumping up and going down. I know, I know, I know the answer. So we're going to go there. We're going to go there. Then we're going to flip this around and go here and here. You see that? Now we're going to take these two pieces. We're going to put them like so. So we can use them to get this up off the ground. And I'm going to take this drill I have here with the little tiny bit that mysteriously matches Chick Flick Teal screws. You see that? And I am going to drill. 
down through there. Notice that Raggedy Ann and Andy Chickwick Teal Towel are in complete safety through my expert tutelage. There we go. And there we go. So what's next? Well, you see that? That is going to be where these things sit up like this. Now, what I do need to know is how much more stuff I can get going on in this mess. But I want to make sure that I know where these are on the outside like this. Because I can take my pencil and do that and that and that and that. That way when I stand these up to screw those in, I can see where the middle is. You see that? Ooh, ah, isn't that sharp? Now I am going to make a table like this, holes down like this, and I'm going to make sure that each of my little legs of the table are one by one in the middle, and then I am going to go down through the hole I've already drilled, like so, and go into that a little bit, like so, and I'm going to do the same thing. right over here. Ooh. Easy money. Now, I am going to take a countersink tool to every one of these four little holes, and I'm going to do just a little bit of this. And you're asking yourself, why? And the answer is because I am not going to want Chick Flick Teal Screw to be sticking up at the bottom. Now, I am going to take said Chick Flick Teal Screw and I am going to drill that down in four places. Once I have doused everything up with a liberal coating of Tight Bond. Yes, I'm actually using Tight Bond this time. Voila. All right, guys, I fast forwarded some. Um, we have our little gadget here. We put in some rods over here so this won't flex back and forth. It's still drying a little but everything seems to be square um, I want you to notice that I put a little radius right here like it would sit up against something that's curved and here's your tuners you see these tuners they turn this way and this way and um, they kind of remind me a lot of this except there's two of them and it sits a little bit different and the spacing on the two tuners seems to line up with that. Do you see that? It almost seems like a guitar string could come through something that was holes for this. You with me? and come up and attach here, and then you could winch on these. Anyway, I need to get a coat of Chick Flick Teal on this puppy, and um, 
Maybe we'll see if it can pull your Jeep out of the ditch or something. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Completely and utterly disamazing. Okay, guys, let's catch up. Look at that. That is Chick Flick Teal. Now, I want you to notice that there's a radius right here. If I'm repeating myself, it's because I'm getting old, but there's a radius right here. So this will sit up against the back end of the guitar, and these will line up where the trapeze tailpiece comes out of the guitar. So it'll be kind of like this. You'll line these up right over this. Um, we're going to need a piece of cork paper or something like this that will attach to uh, or fit between the guitar and this contraption so we can basically winch through these two holes right here and pull once this is flattened against here what we're attached to with guitar strings so let's talk about that part next okay guys I have taken the very risky move of pulling the yardstick off of this guitar temporarily so you can see what's happening this is an eye screw it has an eye on the end of it and it screws in and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put let me move the camera just a bit where you can see this part here I'm going to put this eye screw in right in the middle it's really important that this lines up so we should measure this so it is installed here like so A lot of this lutherism this stuff is what it is, so you just use whatever tool you can. Imagine what a nightmare this would be if the back of the guitar were still on. I'm just using a drill bit to twist this on. But the forces that be say that I don't want to be pulling this off to the side, so I'm going to put this straight up and down because the pull is going to be back this way. Let's twist that camera around down here. And so I'm going to align the eye screw where it is pointed up and down or vertically, axially, with that gap where it's bent over at the bottom just like so okay let's switch over to the tail block and I want to tell you I've got a long a bit of a narrow gauge it's just a little bit less than the screws will put in to put in the tail piece when it's finally done but I have drilled two holes all the way through the tail block and you'll see the drill bit right there do you see it where are you chick flick teal pointer right there and right there now what did I do that for well I am going to take first a piece of dental floss that is long enough to fit through it just happened here one of the F holes like so and we will tape that off there as we need to because I have my my tape dispenser my handy tape dispenser right here so we'll put a piece here and then of course I will put one underneath the guitar where you can't see it on the piece of dental floss that's going to be really important later that dental floss has to be able to reach the eye screw now 
we're going to take a couple guitar strings and of course you notice that they have this ball thing on the end you see that isn't that great I'm gonna lay one here it's gonna take two two separate ones and the gauge of the strings has to be small enough that it will fit through those holes we just drilled so now will they fit through there yes so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the one that goes on the upper side towards the body and stick it through there and I'm going to put the other one this is tricky the end of the other one through the hole there you with me and pull that like that and what that does is it stops this from pulling out of the eye screw do you see that now I'm going to take my piece of dental floss and I am going to tie the dental floss off to the upper string end here they have a name for these things ball end or something like that that I can't seem to think of right now but I know that the camera angle isn't doing anything for you right now but I'm just tying a couple of knots here that would never get me the Boy Scout knot merit badge but what will happen is when I'm done with my operation here and pull these strings out by pulling the dental floss from outside of the guitar I will be able to pull the strings off and leave everyone to wonder for eternity why is that uh, eye screw right there but you I'm talking to you you will know Okay, I have the one on the right. It will feed through the right hole in the tail block. We're going to pull it all the way through till the slack is gone. And we're going to do the same one thing with the left one. And of course, this is our grounding wire off the strings. We don't want to mess with that at all. But, put that that hole and pull it all the way through like so and we will make sure that they are even in how they're pulling by making sure that both eyes are there and without engaging our dental floss we'll assure that by putting piece of tape right there like so there we go we've got a triangle here now that is pulling on the body which will create a pressure let me see if I can get my hands in here like so Okay, there's a lot of slack in these strings, so I'm bringing this string up over the end of the body, and I'm calculating that this curved part will sit against the back of the body where the trapeze tailpiece is, and I have my holes right there. So I am going to put, if my old aunt, man eyes will help me, I am going to pull that through like that and do the same thing with the other string until I get close enough to pull this down like this at which point I can kink the string wrap it around itself and then use this to tighten everything up and therefore adjust the angle that I need to do this to get my string action right alright I think this angle is going to be a little bit better for you I've grabbed both of the strings you can see them coming from 
here and here. And now I'm just going to pick this up like so and hold that against the body. And then I can just basically turn these until I get a wrap or two over each other. And I can feel that. I'm starting to tighten up. Okay, now once I have everything tightened up, I can look underneath because I have strings and the floating bridge on here. I can raise this up a little bit and tighten each of these and winch the body like so into shape to where I get the right action I need, the angle set right by pulling this up. You see how this will winch up. And I can help that along. Remember, these strings are not that big. But this winch will help me. And then once this is all done, I slack these off. Once the back is on and glued and, and clamped, and I'm going to use some spool clamps to make sure everything is lined up, leave it sit for a couple days, then I just simply take this off, cut the strings, and pull them out with this piece of dental floss that I conveniently have on the outside of the guitar. Okay, now it's just a matter of, with some clamps and glue and a matter of flexing the sides in here and there as they need to be, of putting the back on pumpkin. I'm gonna make sure that the front end up here is lined up. The rest of it might take some trimming. There might be something that you can see sticking out but you got to remember, this guitar was made in 1962, so it's 60-some years old by now, and it's going to want to complain. When you try to get an old man off the couch, they complain. Y'all know that, right? All right, so I got to thinking, clamping on the back of punk, and you can see that the, uh, the big punk and fluted body thing settled in all right and we've got some stuff going on here that I'm going to explain and it starts off you got some questions and you're probably asking yourself how on earth what makes him able to come up with these goofy ideas about using a winch and all this other garbage that he does and really there's only one explanation for it there can only be one what gives me the skills is yeah, I'm oil field trash. What else could it be? Okay, in all seriousness, you remember how badly the body was fluted. That's why I called it pumpkin. Um, let me point out a couple things to you first. Um, the bows, the lower bow and the upper bow. Bow, 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 yippee yo, yippee a, yippee, sing along now. Um, it's really important that the edges about midway on the radius of the bows line up here and you can see that do I have it up here no we need to move this camera up just a little bit now that I got that oil filled winch line joke out of the way there we go you want to start off by making sure that you have your hide glue Heat it up, check, a good brush that will flatten out and go down between there. You want to have your guitar Botox needle. We're going to fill that with heated up hide glue. You want to have those ready. You want to have a wet rag and you want to make sure that you keep your glue ready by having your favorite Do rag close by to set your hide glue on the place where it's not going to turn over. You see that? Anyway, we've got a good coat of hide glue on the underside of the back of the guitar as well as everywhere along the kerfing here. Now, the problem we have is that once we flexed everything, there's going to be a little bit sticking out here. There's about that much sticking out here, but everything else is pretty lined up. So we're going to take clamps all the way around Pumpkin here. Did you know that Bob Log the Third 
used to be in do-rag. Did you know that if you want to know what's under the mask of Bob Log the Third, it's right there. Oh, it's enough. I don't really need to upset Bob. Anywhere, where were we? We're going to take some clamps. You see that there's tape on everything. You always want to make sure that there's tape, everything is taped off. But what inevitably is going to happen here is you're going to need a big clamp like this one. And it's got a pistol handle on it that you can run across and pull the side that's sticking out away from the rest of the body. You see that there? And whenever you're working on a radius, you're going to figure out that this clamp is going to want to slip. So let's say that this side is okay here. I'm going to put the flat edge of that clamp. You see there's a little groove in it too. I can put it there and if I need to pull in the other side, I can just do this until it goes in. Now sometimes this is going to want to slip. The clamp is going to want to slip. So if I go over on this side and put a clamp over here and push this down where I can give that clamp something to lean against where it won't slip and do the same thing over on this side like so that is basically how you're going to pull in everything because the bottom is going to be sticking out here and there. Now, we've got everything even up in this area up here. And sometimes based on what the sides want to do, there might be a little bit sticking out there or there. There's certainly some sticking out here. But again, I used this winch here to pull everything into place where the string action is okay. So now I'm going to clamp this up and I'm going to leave it sit and I'm going to talk to you and close this out here in a minute. Yeah, ask me about my free surgical procedure now, son. Uh-huh. What's that? Yeah, pigs say that when you kick them. You know what? I barely broke a sweat. Yeah. Anyway. Whew. This came out all right that was episode 11 the final episode before we get some footage of somebody playing this because it's going all the way across the country but the next and final episode we are going to put some things on this that we always do we're going to fine tune any of the glue spots we're going to get rid of some of the stuff that's still sticking out from the body fighting us yeah Moral story, Punkin, you took on 27 clamps and you lost. I know you're a rebel, but Dottie's not around here anymore. So anyway, there we go. If you haven't seen the playlist for this whole thing, I think you're probably thinking this is pretty crazy if this is the first one you saw, but it's right up there. One more time, guys. Think about how much time they had to put into this guitar in the Harmony factory. It's a Harmony H1213 in 1962 when they built it. They were literally blowing these out by the hundreds. And you've seen how much time I've had to put back into this one. So they were masters at what they were doing at putting out catalog guitars that would get to the point despite every kind of neglect being in the attic, giving up uh, after three guitar lessons in the 60s or 50s or whenever it was, and it getting to me and being dried out. Look at how much time I've put into this. Now, uh, I mentioned somebody at the top end of the program named Ted Woodford. You want to check down below and get a link there. But he said in a recent, fairly recent uh, podcast he did with somebody else, a vlogger, that the price of these is starting to go up. I hope I'm not responsible for that, for putting 5,500 of you roughly that follow my channel, uh, going out and buying at least one of these and saving it from the fireplace. So, these things are kind of like vinyl records. Little did you know they'd be coming back. So, guys, thanks for watching. 
Uh, I like your comments about some of the stuff I come up with. It's pretty capped and obvious that there's two holes there you can use. The dental floss to pull out the strings. I think I dream the stuff. Um, imagine if I abused substances other than high glue. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a like if you haven't. A subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you where we finally wrap up Punkin real soon.